Welcome back to School of Calisthenics. It is a croaky Jacko and Tim, because I'm a little bit poorly, Jacko's so I apologise. Jacko's poorly today. It's not very well. Husky voice. I can do great um, impressions of... Um, who's like the husky singers? Uh, Barry White Barry, yeah. is one of them. Barry White. <laughs> do you know is any Barry nice? White songs? I uh, don't really. <laughs> what does he sing? Um... I actually have got a Barry White album have you? yeah it's quite good <laughs> we learn something new every day. it's a sort of thing that like I'm not much of a singer anyway so to sing anything let alone Barry White yeah. which is a very requires a certain amount of talent I think to even venture into that realm. or a cold or a cold yeah and you're um, yeah, great at singing no <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, I was going to say you've got Welsh heritage that might oh, lend itself yeah, yeah. to a good like voice Tom jo- like Tom Jones yeah yeah, well, yeah. see yeah. you do a good rate Welsh accent anyway you haven't tuned in to listen to us <laughs> to, to, to talk about Barry White but um, we'll give Jacko a little bit of uh, a little bit of grace today so why don't you ask the first question question yeah. master um, well so we, there was two people that asked a very similar question I had um, Talitha Judith on email asking about training diaries and what you should keep in your training log and how to use it most effectively to help your calisthenics journey. Yeah, I had a similar question came through. I think it was on YouTube from Raphael Kotzok, which was how to keep an organised training log. Um, what was his surname? Kotzok. Uh, how he's thought about starting a training log himself but didn't know how to start or what to write down. So let's cover... Let's cover training logs. Training logs or training diaries. You may have seen yes. those that watch you on YouTube. We do have the training diaries back in stock. Um, beautiful little things. Yes. Um, There's an email about that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, there's a, they're out of stock, but they are coming into stock. But hopefully by the time you hear this, they'll, they'll be back in stock. They'll be back in stock. But what you'll, what you'll notice is that the pages inside are blank, so to use your own creative flair to be able to record um, your training log, diary, and your what, what we're going to discuss. Yeah, I, I've found that over the years of, of trying to... A number of different formats to help athletes to record training information. And, and let's just kind of like, like pitch this in it. Why is it even worthwhile? Well, as you go through a training week or from months or, or six months or a year, whatever, it's really useful if you know from session to session what you did in the session before. So that's the one benefit. So when you come in, say you did six pull-ups last time and you're working to try and get to 10, you know that you did six, so you can aim for seven the next time. Or you might be, you can change the variables so that you're constantly working out what have I done before, therefore what do I need to be trying to move towards. And you can track that progress over time. You can look back over a six-month period and go, okay, it's amazing, like I've actually done quite well to move from where I was at. Because yeah. sometimes when you've got your head in the training program, you don't always look yeah, up you for forget, Yeah, you forget, yeah. And sometimes it can be more motivating as well to look back and go, oh, because so, sometimes you feel like you're in a bit of a hole and you're like, oh, God, training's difficult, I'm not making any progress. And you go, you look back in your diary a couple of months and you go, actually, mm. I was only able to do X and now I can actually. Yeah. We just forgot about it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I think that's the one, that's the one major point. And the other one to start off with is, is just to go, it actually encourages you to think about what you're doing. So rather than going to the gym and going, I don't know what to do today, yeah. it actually leads you into that, that uh, mindset of having a structured program, which okay, I'm going to write down these three sessions I'm going to do a week, these are the exercises I'm going to do, and then that, big thing about that is it's going to help you to commit to that consistency over a longer period because you're almost each session is holding yourself accountable to the training program and what yeah. you're going to do from what you've done in weeks before yeah. and you've talked about how important that is rather it's not about doing one amazing session yeah. it's about doing lots of good sessions over a long period of time yeah and, and we've over the years played around with different templates for athletes and, and different methods of then recording data and I've tried to structure that over the years and gone, well, here are your reps and your sets, write these numbers in this box, and then all of a sudden the session just goes in a way which is like, I didn't quite do it like that this time because I had to adapt it or I wasn't feeling great or I had yeah. a rough day, and then all of a sudden you're kind of stuck with this structure that doesn't work, and what I ended up doing was just scribbling all over a piece of paper and not actually worrying too much about what the the actual kind of the, the boxes were that I was supposed to be filling out. Yeah. So we've kind of taken it's a very simple approach and it might not look that glamorous and you might think oh actually what I want is how many sets and reps and percentage repetition max and all that kind of stuff sleep hydration for the day you can massively complicate training diaries I actually just think the best way is a real blank clean piece of paper and just you can you've got freedom like you said before the creativity to go this is what I've done I'll make some quick notes here yeah. mine's a mess you look at my training diaries yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an absolute scribbled mess and no one else will understand it apart from me yeah but that's the only person that does need to exactly I actually like, you don't want other people to go it's like, all you do in the gym <laughs> <laughs> but so the, like just getting into just the take home things for that little part of it before we move on to, to other things you might want to record is like so the exercises 
that you're doing. Yeah. The reps and sets that you are planning to do and then what you actually manage to do because they yeah. might be different. All those acute variables of reps and sets and then the target ones. And yeah. then I, actually at the moment, I might have targets just because some of the work that I'm doing, let's say eight reps and four sets. Because of the, some of the tempos and the loads, I'm getting to the back end of those sets and I can't do them. So I'm yeah. breaking them down to clusters. So I might go eight, eight, six, and a two. Yeah. And my last set might be four, one, one, one. But then I know the next time I go in, I'm going to try and at least add an extra rep onto that third set so it's a seven and one. I'm, yeah. I'm pushing, so that means that in that period of time I've made an improvement. Yeah, yeah. And then if you've used any tools from the locker, so whether you're doing like isometrics, like how long, what was your target hold for, and then how, what, what did you actually manage to do? Yeah. Did you manage to do one of the sets at a harder progression because you've got better, like keep mm. a record of that? Did you use a resistance band? What, what, what type of band was it? The green yeah. one? Was it the, the purple one? Like which, what level of band did you use? Like having kept track of those things um, as the nuts and bolts of like the data collection mm. if you like of what's going to go in your log um, I think that's pretty much everything yeah. in terms of that and that's why I think there's some of that stuff it, like even just saying it it kind of sounds a bit uncoordinated and messy because it, it's just going to be like I say it's, it can be a fairly rough document but it needs to be flexible you, yeah right, totally it. and you don't want to end up like just kind of feeling that you've got to spend ages for this diary and yeah. I literally finish a set bang numbers in and then move yeah. on to the next one and I think you're right as well. Like sometimes I've got a number of sessions. This is my program, but generally when I program for myself, I'm putting fairly challenging. Well, I'm putting challenging sessions together. And then sometimes after a week, it's just not. Yeah. It's just not what I want to feel like I want to do. So just changing that. Yeah. Don't feel restricted by what you write down. Yeah. I know often I've done this loads. You, when you're not in the gym and you're and you're writing it. You have this elaborate idea of the amount of stuff you can do in an hour and an hour and a half, mm. and you write down like all oh, these yeah. different exercises. Then you get in the gym, you've done like three, and you've yeah. written down ten or something, <laughs> and you're like, "I'm smoked." There's no way I'm gonna. Be. And then the problem, the only problem with that is, is that you can then start to feel bad because you haven't done it, and you try to finish it rather than be realistic. I would plan to do less, yeah, and then add something on yeah, yeah. if you're have, feeling great at the end of the session. Almost have a couple of things at the end where you go, "Right, these are my finishes." So if I've got yeah. this, it's going to be these kind of sets of reps that I'm just do to just to, bl to blast yeah. out that session I kind of think about it like as we're talking it's a little bit like your old revision timetable for your exams and like there's old thing that teachers say don't spend ages doing your revision timetable and one of the things that I would do is in temptation I was never that structured but um you could spend different colours, different size boxes, like make this beautiful revision timetable. And actually, what you need to do is crack on, <laughs> do some revision, and revise. <laughs> it's the same principle. Just have a rough idea of what you're going to do in your diary, but then actually train, get yeah. in the gym and train. Yeah, there's a couple of other things I would sort of um, recommend you could dabble with uh, trying to record. Would be top end. Um, goals that you've got for yourself so like having a record written down of like this is the thing that I'm working for like long term and, and work work back from your long term mm. in terms of goal setting like look at the what's the what's the impossible that you're trying to achieve and work your goals back from there but you're 10 times like research into goal setting says you're 10 times or sorry 5 to 10 times more likely to achieve it if you've written it down compared to just keeping it in your head I think when you write it down and see it in black and white mm. in front of you it's it becomes accountable to you um, rather than it just being a thought or a bit of a dream in your head. Um, and if you're looking and using it, your training diary regularly for your sessions, then you're going to see that goal and it's going to remind yeah, you yeah. and you're going to be more likely to stay on, on task with it. Um, and then a couple of other things that could be useful to do would be um, like a score out of five or a score out of ten of how you actually feel before you start the session. So you've got an idea of like how fatigued am I or how mm. great am I feeling, like ten being the best. Um, and then also at the end of your session, a, another score of like how hard was that yeah. session. Um, and I would also keep a, 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 a log or just a note of any like little niggles, that, not like injuries, but mm. like, but like, oh, that felt like my right shoulder just felt a bit funny on that last muscle up. Like make a, like, make a note so you can start to go, if you do start to pick up injuries, you can then look back and go, actually, I saw that coming four yeah, weeks yeah. before and I didn't do anything about it. Like, next time I'm going to make sure I do. And then if you start to see in your session, after your score is like, I'm one out of ten after my session because I smoked myself and my shoulders are niggly. Yeah. You then make sure next time you come in, you look back at that and remind yourself you need to do some decent release and prep work yeah, yeah. before cracking onto your session. I think that plays... You've got a load of stuff there which plays at different personalities and different types. Like, mm. I'm, I'm kind of... 
fairly in tune with how I feel. And, and there was a period where I was doing some actually more advanced data collection through an app-based system with some, some physiological measures. But I was writing down those kind of things. How do I feel? What was my motivation like? How hard was the session? Because that was giving me a gauge on, on what the physiological response was. And I think some people quite like that level of detail. Yeah. Whereas, as I said, my diary is literally like the, the date of the session, where, where I've done the session. So because I'm training at home or at the gym. Um, what number session week that week that is? Um, my exercises, supersets, reps and sets achieved, and, and I knock it on the head there. But that's yeah. enough for me to go back um, yeah, yeah. because ultimately, like some of the wellness stuff is really important if you're training a lot and, and identifying niggles. Um, but also, I don't have the luxury of I'm, I'm really, really short on training time, so yeah, actually, yeah, you've got to get something done. Yeah, that's always the biggest thing around it. Like we can add these things in, but it's got to enhance what you're currently doing. So make sure that it is facilitating better training. Um, rather than being a distraction of your training, you've got a beautiful training. Yeah, mark, yeah. Like it ruled out, highlighted, different coloured pens. But actually, you don't do anything at the gym. Yeah. The, so. What's going to make you progress the most is yeah. your training. Yeah. How, if like you say, facilitating it rather than oh, I've got a training diary now. That's <laughs> gonna my gains are gonna go up tenfold. Yeah. It's more about what you how you use it to facilitate yeah. better training. Yeah. Well, a really sure. useful piece of a, a piece of equipment, if you want to call it that, or a tool in helping you to progress. Yeah, so if you um, yeah, and if you want to get one of the one of the diaries from us, um, you could obviously just write it down in any piece of scrap paper. To be fair, um, but we've if you like the sort of look of those fancy school calisthenics ones, the, there's a link in the description below for that. So the next question. The next Tim. question is coming from somebody called Joshua Hunsteiger. Joshua is pretty active on our YouTube channel. German sounds German that name. I wouldn't like Heinsteiger. to guess, but yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so Joshua saw the video that we put up a, a few weeks back now about my deep handstand push-ups. Very nice. Asked a question about this, and it's one that's come up quite a bit, and we're actually going to film a handstand tutorial around handstand, wall handstand push-up tutorials, which um, you have a look out for. So he's, he's written quite a long, uh, his long question. He said, great video once again. You continue to raise the bar on quality content. Oh, Joshua. You're on. You're in. I feel like that's genuine. Just yeah, enough. yeah. Well, to be fair, something that I didn't mention was those questions about the training diary was it started with a, a nice comment that didn't well, read it out, so I forgot. Yeah, yeah. So he says that the question is he's progressively trying to work towards um, handstand push ups against the wall. He's working on his pipe push ups um, with hips stacked over the shoulders. So the question is basically um, should he do those with the chest facing the wall or chest away? So that would either be a wall walk up into a handstand position against the wall or a kick up position. Yeah. Uh, he says, You see me doing them uh, with my chest facing away from the wall, which would have been a kick up. And actually, Joshua, not, you've done well to get on here because he actually says, I saw Tim performing the chest away from the wall, which seems to me to reinforce poor form with a banana bag. Oh, it's awkward. Awkward. But I've got some signs. Uh, of course he has. <laughs> As always. Um, so he says, assume the chest wall will be better form and it would lend itself eventually to freestanding progression, which is, again, a good point about where do we go in terms of freestanding handstand. Push-up. Um, could you explain which one would be better? Uh, can I just say one okay. thing before you start? Is just it, it does depend, and it one is not necessarily better than the other. One is not wrong. Mm. It, you can use both and I'll elaborate on that later after you, you shoot <laughs> but I just wanted to start with that that like this idea that like certain things are right and certain things yes yeah, c- certain things are wrong if they're like dangerous and whatnot, mm. and you're going to get injured but they're not not everything is just like black and white like one's right one's wrong like yeah. what's the best training program like that's another one like yeah, yeah. you're going to follow the same training program for the rest of your life no like things change and you need to do different things at different times yeah, exactly. depends what your problem is where you need to get stronger at. yeah there's so much in this, I'm going to try and build it through in a logical order in my mind because there's a number of different reasons or, or, or thoughts and rationales as to why, I could, why you might choose one over the other. So the, the first one I'm just going to throw in is, it's so, if we have got a banana back, and I'm going to talk a bit about that later, from my perspective, if you can, the spine has the capacity to move like that, it should be able to load bear like that. So if we're stable, it's not ideal if you want to go and hand a start a perfectly, perfect handstand position, but in the context of a wall kick-up handstand, it's almost a little bit inevitable because you can't put your hands directly towards uh, close to the wall to create a completely straight line because we have to create space for the head. And we also, we want to think about what's happening with the elbow position. If we, we want to make this sort of this tripod, which is what happens in a freestanding handstand. So the head is actually coming in front of the hands, elbows are being close to the body, nice and tight, which creates a nice stable shoulder position. With that in mind, when you're using the wall for stability, you have to find the wall. Otherwise, if you were doing that, that same position, you would have the feet off. And that's the point that Joshua makes about um, one being more, having more crossover. 
the thing that you, I think the video that you'd seen, Joshua, was, was about me doing some elevated handstand push-ups, and that changes the dynamic of that exercise quite significantly. If you're, yeah, but just the, the other thing about there's a, the banana back as a, as a term, there's a, there's a big difference between thoracic extension and lumbar. Yeah. And if, the, if, the, if there is a, a, an extension coming from your thoracic when you're overhead, like your thoracic is supposed to extend mm. properly for you to go into an overhead position. So you're not supposed to be like the way the shoulder and the mechanics of the shoulder and the scapula work, we need some thoracic extension. So mm. if, when I look at your position where, yes, your feet are going to have to go over the top to touch the wall, so there's going to be some of that shape. It's not a, uh, it's not a lumbar issue putting strain on the vertebrae. Yeah. It's more of a thoracic extension, feet are finding the wall. Um, and that's the thing I was going to say, like actually from a, in, in a tight position, the hip's got about five degrees of extension. So in that, in that shape, actually, is it, is it hip extension? Yeah, or exactly. Is it yeah. T-spine extension or a combination of... The point for me is when I, when I do it like that, it's for the point of getting strong yeah. and when I can and I can transfer that into a handstand and I can do a handstand with straight body line. And if you didn't have midsection control when you're pushing down hard to get out of that deep position, You'd you wouldn't go up. Yeah, yeah. You you actually wouldn't you wouldn't be able to transfer that force through. So yeah, I think I think some of the um, some of the, some parts of it is like kicking up creates people people have the idea that kicking up creates a banana position therefore it's bad yeah. and not actually fully understanding what a banana position is what hip extension is yeah, what thoracic yeah. extension is so the reason for kicking up in my, in my, in my rationale is that it, it gives me the opportunity to create more vertical pushing strength because it puts me in a position where I can actually drive vertically if you were to walk up and then go and do handstand push-ups in a walk up because of where the elbow position so you could go super tight to the wall but then when you come down into that position the elbows are going to get in the way it's going to be a bit funny the feet as they slide on the wall is a bit uncomfortable it's not uncomfortable it's just unusual and you're still having to put the head down into a tripod position otherwise you're not you're going to load up the shoulder in a particularly in not a particularly effective way you also, as you, as you come into that wall handstand, the feet are going to slide down, which is going to tip you into a slightly more horizontal style pushing movement, which is, again, in a handstand, freestanding handstand push-up, you are kind of dropping into a slight angle. So yeah. you do need some of that horizontal pushing force, but it's at a high angle. It's high horizontal, vertical almost at the same time. But I'm interested in, in that vertical pushing strength. That, that, that When those are in my program, it's because that is part of the movements I want to go. I've got yeah. horizontal pushing and pulling, vertical pushing and pulling, and I want to load vertical pushing as much as I can because it's going to help with a lot of the, the, the handstand work that I want to do. So there's so much in there. Oh, and the, my last point on this one is if you're going to try and go elevated, because wall, hand, wall handstand push-ups with me, my hands on the floor are fairly easy. And I, I only, obviously, you only get range of movement where your hands are going to go to your head. Yeah. So to elevate them and to the level that I need to elevate them, it's actually, I would say, not safe for me and not achievable to wall walk and then go step myself yeah. up onto a high box yeah. so that I can then get yeah. into a I've tried it. It's been hard. hard. It's, but like, as in hard to get into the position yeah. and you feel like you're going to just crumple like yeah. when you can't do that last rep you're in a bit of trouble so yeah. it's potentially can put you in a spot of bother yeah so I think that, that, that there'd be probably jumps around I said there's quite a lot within that so I, if we just try and summarise yeah. that the kick up for me allows me to give me um, better uh, vertical pushing training it allows me to use a, a deficit so to elevate my hands on a box so I can get a better range of movement um, in a can, safe way. In a safe way, yeah. I'm working hard through midsection, and if there is some back extension, it could be coming from some thoracic spine. I'll try and minimise it as much as I can, so yeah. I lock down the midsection, and I don't get any pain while I do it, and the capacity within this body is to move in that way. So yeah. with those things combined, I'm actually quite comfortable with it. Is it the perfect alignment for handstand training? Well, it's not, but that's not what I'm using that exercise for. Yeah, and if I think if you were... The, 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 you touched on it when you talked about the wall one where you'd come down and you'd come forward and you'd be on a bit of an angle mm. so rather than vertical you've come to slightly more horizontal but nowhere near horizontal but yeah. slightly more horizontal and that's the freestanding position you need to get into so you can create that tripod with your head and your hands like using the wall to practice to help you practice that bit is like relevant mm. to get that position but what you found is that if you get really strong with your vertical pushing and you practice your freestanding handstand balance when you put the two together you practice your freestanding handstand push-ups by do, literally doing freestanding mm. handstand push-ups because you've got the balance yeah. and you've built the vertical pushing strength and you can then put them together mm. if someone's really struggling to get that alignment in that position 
it might be that you want to use the wall the other way yeah but it might be actually that you just a lot of the time we're just not strong enough yeah, yeah. so actually getting better at vertical pushing is going to be is going to be beneficial i find when i walk up and i go high and i try and do sort of like a high walk up so chest to the wall um, hands down push up I don't feel my feet slide very well on the yeah. wall it feels yeah. uncomfortable I feel like my range of movement is really small yeah. um, I think you've, you've, you've hit the nail on the head there with it. if I'm strong enough to push up into that position I've just got to do some patterning work yeah. in my freestanding positions to find out where that is and the other thing about the wall walk up handstand is that I feel like when I lower down I'm resting force in the direction which is actually going to mean if the wall's not there my feet are going to collapse yeah, yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean I'm relying yeah, yeah, on that yeah, as a break yeah, yeah, almost yeah, yeah. whereas if I go up overhead and I kick up I can actually use the wall a little bit less. Yeah. Then I've got a bit more. I feel like I've got yeah. more choice there as to yeah. how much of that wall support I'm going to use. Yeah. And I think I, I just think about my own training where I've played with that face in the wall and then actually the thing that I use if I want to work on I'm going against myself now actually because I'm starting to think <laughs> that well only that the, actually what work, what has worked best for me and that just because it worked best for me doesn't mean it's going to work best for everyone and vice versa with yours if I want to work on that alignment part being at a slight angle when I'm going down for those freestanding ones I find it much better literally kicking up coming away from the wall yeah. and trying to just do the eccentric come down almost to like a headstand mm. and feel that body line as I'm coming down not using the wall and then build the strength to push back up yeah. with, 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 as just normal um, rather than using the wall like you say I think using using the wall with your chest facing it and the feet resting on it takes all of that like control and load out of the midsection to hold the feet yeah. up um, and that's probably actually the most challenging bit that you actually need yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it yeah ultimately I don't want to say it's wrong because no. I said at the beginning that it's not like I think it can be used but I think we've both found that the other way yeah. and depending on how you do it you can get the outcome you want. Yeah, move with... The priority is about moving with, with, with good quality. Like, move with high-quality um, control, high-quality awareness. And if, if I see people doing handstand push-ups and they've got massively bent out of shape, I'd be like, well, you're not transferring force well because you haven't got the midsection locked down. Yeah. If there's some curvature there and it's not causing pain as before, I'm not too worried. Yeah. We've spitballed a lot in there because it's actually it's, it's a really good question. It's a great, yeah, it's interesting because there's um, lots of different aspects to it. Yeah, I, like and I think it. I think it's really good that you're thinking like that, and I think play around and see how you. I think there's so much value in practicing this sort of stuff. I've, I've over the years as an SNC coach, my training for a long time now has, has been an experiment, and that's how we got into calisthenics. And a lot of how we teach now is have, because we've tried a lot of different things, and we, we hope we can add a little bit of depth and texture because we've kind of done that and gone actually. It's, when I walk backwards, for me to try and load my body onto a wall handstand and try and step up which was probably about a foot that I was doing yeah, it was like, deep. it's just not nice <laughs> so yeah. to have a play around with it see what works see where you feel like your strength uh, how, what the strength requirements are and, and, uh, and, and make your own decision we've always had a thing with that from an athlete perspective is that we should be able to rationalise and provide justification for every single yeah. exercise that's on a programme so if someone came to me and said to me why have you done that I should be able to link that into the athlete's individual requirements and assessment that I've done and the sport specific requirements and where that fits in the season yeah. and if you can't do those things then actually you haven't, there's no need yeah. for exercise to be in the programme yeah. so I think critically evaluating why you're doing what you're doing yeah. I think having talked... it written down in your training guide yeah. great way to actually put pen to paper yeah. and look at it and go why am I doing that rather than walk into the gym and go what should I do today yeah. we've talked about that in, I think in, a pre, in one of the early Q&A's mm. and podcasts about um, understanding what it is you're trying to get out of it and then building your choosing your exercise selection based upon a, a rational decision as to what, you're, what yeah, bits yeah. you're weak at and what bits you need to improve on yeah 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 Great, we're going to leave it there because there's quite a lot of stuff there to go and digest. And my voice is about to disappear. Dave needs to get a go to Barry bed. Barry White. Uh, What's the we got a Barry White song yet? Yeah? Harvey will put one on the idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least a picture. <laughs> So thanks for joining us, guys. If you've enjoyed it, let us know. Drop some comments in below or send us a, get in touch with us on social. Um, we are always open for, for questions, yeah. so drop those over to us and we, we pick the best ones. We said before that the ones that we think are going to help more people and often some trends like today. And they say nice things about us. That yeah, helps. please do that because it <laughs> gives us a warm up. Especially when Jacko is not well. He'll go yeah. home and he can get in his sick bed tonight and he'll just be like, Joshua Hunstagger oh, likes me. What, what would really <laughs> make me feel better, I think, and my voice would make me feel a lot better, would be a nice review on iTunes. That would Ooh, make me five feel, stars, maybe. That would make me fit well. At, yeah, at, at five. Least. And we have <laughs> is it people, out of ten. People, people. Um, so we get quite a few Facebook reviews, and, and somebody, um, somebody gave me one. and gave us three stars the other day, and I'm, we, we, that's we, we, it's great. 
Oh, it's a yeah. bit middle of the road. It's good that they've done one. So I said to him, just wondered how we could turn that three stars into five. And he wrote back, he's like, come and train me. <laughs> I was like, fair. he's in India. Well, that's fair comment. Yeah, I was like, at least you've... Um, yeah. I feel like you've Did you go back and say, what about how do we turn it into four? <laughs> yeah. Let's go halfway. Yeah, free book. <laughs> free book. <laughs> so yeah, we like, the, we like the, the, the higher end of the reviews. <laughs> if, if, out there. If, only if you think it's worth it. Yeah. But yeah, thank you very much for listening. Until next time. Am I allowed? Of course you are. Class dismissed.